Welcome to this introduction to Vixen 3 video series. In this multi-part series, we will introduce the new concepts and features of Vixen 3 and give you a quick overview of how to get started. It's elemental. This first part of the video series will give you an introduction to a new concept in Vixen 3, elements. We will explore what an element is and how it relates to your display. We'll show you how to set them up and how to organize them to take advantage of powerful features new to Vixen 3. What is an element? The concepts of elements is new to Vixen 3. It's similar to what you might have called channels in other sequencers, even Vixen 2. But really it's different. It's separate from the outputs altogether. So what is an element? An element is an individually controlled unit that will manipulate in the sequence. Could be many different things such as traditional lights, floodlights, a strand in a mega tree, a prop or a blow mold or even something fancy like a moving light fixture. A string of traditional lights could be an element. There may be times when groups of strings are used together and that whole group might be an element. An RGB mini tree is a good example of this. Three strings of red, green, and blue would be strung around a frame. You could use just one element to define that mini tree. A simple Christmas tree where everything is connected to just one point of control, that would be an element. A floodlight can be an element. This is an intelligent RGB pixel. Each RGB pixel would be an element. You might also have a string of dumb RGB pixels that look exactly the same as this. In that case, since each bulb isn't individually controllable, the whole string is just one element rather than each bulb being an element. Here we have a flexible pixel strip. Each pixel on the strip is one element. This is a Mac 2K moving head fixture, professional stage lighting instrument. It uses many DMX channels to control all of its parameters such as RGB color, its zoom, focus, strobing, and even XY movement axes. But in Vixen 3, this is all just one element. So, what is an element? Element. It's a noun. Yeah, we know that. Let's see. Mm, I don't know what that means. Let's see. Yeah, that's a little closer. Aha, there we go, that's the definition I was looking for, the basic building block of a Christmas light display. I have a snowflake. My snowflake has 36 RGB pixels. Like most RGB items, each pixel consists of three individually controllable colors, red, green, and blue. So how does this break down? 36 pixels times three colors equals 108 individual points of control. That's the way it was in Vixen 2. In order to sequence this snowflake in Vixen 2, you would need to define and sequence 108 channels. This is where the power of Vixen 3 comes to the rescue. Vixen 3 handles RGB natively. This prop is actually only 36 elements in Vixen 3. How convenient. All right, now let's get started in Vixen. I'm going to double click on my icon and get the software running here. And in a moment, we got the window popping up. You'll notice on the left-hand side, you have the sequences area. And on the right-hand side, you have the system configuration area. Everything in here is kind of organized top to bottom. Um, so in the system configuration side, you got your configure elements and groups. You got configure controllers, configure filters and patching, and then configure previews. And this is uh, top to bottom because it is a suggested order that you would go and configure things. Same applies on the left. You have to create a new sequence before you could open a sequence. So top to bottom working order again here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to configure our system. We're going to configure some elements and groups. Let's click on that. And this is what we got. We have no elements here in the list on the left. So we would need to start by adding some. So I'm going to add multiple right now. Uh, we could do them one at a time, but I find that tedious. So we're going to add multiple. Here's the name generation window. So in here, you have a couple different kinds of templates and a couple different kinds of naming rules. First of all, you could create things. Well, first of all, let's work with that uh, snowflake example we talked a couple minutes ago. There's how many pixels in that snowflake? I think we said 36 pixels in that snowflake. Now let's figure out how we're going to name them. 
we look at uh, how this does it, we kind of start to make sense. We got new name, that's what we see here. So I'm going to call this Snowflake Pixel and then put a dash in here and well, this is in grid items, so this is like row one, column one, row one, column two. That's not really appropriate for what we're doing here. That might be more appropriate for a grid or a matrix or something like that. So let's see what else we got. RGB items. Hmm. New name one 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 two 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 three. Nope. That's not really appropriate for something like what we're doing. This would be appropriate for a different kind of RGB item that uh, will become a little more evident later. In this case, we just want simple old numbered items. So we're going to make this, i got to type this in again. Snowflake pixel, and now we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way down through 36 here. So this is going to make this all lined up using numbered items, snowflake pixel 1 through snowflake pixel 36. Click OK. Look at that. We got a whole bunch of pixels. Uh, so we have 36 elements to find, and that makes up my snowflake. Whoa, that's a lot of elements. How can I keep all of these elements organized? When you have a large number of elements, you need a way to organize things so that you can work with them more quickly and effectively. Often a bunch of elements are somehow related. In my previous snowflake example, the 36 pixel elements are all part of one snowflake. We could use a group to organize all of those pixels into one unit that we can manipulate in the sequencer all as one. You might also use groups to gather similar but separate elements. Say you have 10 candy canes along each side of your driveway. You can group them into groups called left candy canes and right candy canes. This way you could have independent chases along both sides of your driveway. You can then go one step further and add both of those groups to one larger group called simply candy canes. Groups can be nested as deep as you like. In this way, you can apply just one effect in the sequencer to fade all 20 candy canes in or out at the same time. Let's take a look at how we set this all up. Okay, so now we're back here on the display elements and group configuration page. You notice I still got all my snowflake pixels, 1 through 36 here that we created in the last example. There's a couple different ways to take these pixels and work with groups. First I'm going to show you one way over here. I'm going to select uh, all of these pixels and I'm going to do that by selecting the first one, holding down the shift key and selecting the last one. You'll see they all highlight 1 through 36. Then we got a button over here called Create Group. What this button does is it copies these pixels into a new group that we name. So I'm going to call this Snowflake. So I made this group called Snowflake. I'm going to hit Enter. OK. And now we got Snowflake over here. This one's actually Snowflake 2. I'm not sure why that's the case, but we'll get to that in a minute. So when I come down here, I expand this and I see that my Snowflake 2 is pixels numbered 1 through 36 in there. But you see they're also still out here. Now, at this point, you might wonder why are they still out there. It's because you could actually use the same element in more than one group. I'm not going to cover that quite yet because that's a more advanced feature. So I'm going to go right back here, select all those pixels that aren't in a group again, and we're just going to come over here and click Delete. And note that the Delete key on the keyboard works just as well. So now I can collapse this and all 36 things are in my one snowflake. It's called Snowflake 2. That's bugging me. I don't know why it's called Snowflake 2. I'm just going to call this Snowflake and see if it takes it again here. Okay, it did take it the second time. I'll have to add that to the bug list. Anyhow, let's, uh, let's make some more snowflakes. Say I got more than one of these snowflakes. In fact, in my house, I have five of these snowflakes. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm going to take and I'm going to add, but this time instead of adding multiple, I'm just gonna add one. I'm gonna call this snowflake two like that. 
And uh, for the heck of it, I'm going to go here and I'm going to add multiple. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a little bit more on how to use this. I'm going to make some more numbered items. I'm going to collect numbers down in my naming rules. I'm going to start at number three. And I'm going to end at number five. And I'm going to generate three names. And these are going to be Snowflake three through Snowflake five. That's what I wanted to do here. I don't know if that was any faster than doing it three times on its own, but we got it there. If I was doing a whole bunch more, it would definitely be faster. So we'll click OK. And now I got Snowflake 2, 3, 4, and 5. Let's go back to this guy one more time. Let's rename him Snowflake 1. OK. So now I have Snowflake 1 through 5. 1 has a little plus sign. It contains elements. These other groups which look a whole lot like elements, because an element and a group really are the same thing. A group is an element that contains other elements. And that's what makes it a group. So I'm going to click over here, and I'm going to add multiple. And we're going to go back here again. We're going to do numbered items. And we're going to make this pixel 1. And we had 36 in there. So we're going to make this pixel 1 through 36. OK. And I'm going to take these guys, I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to select these guys again. And instead of going create group like I did, I already got that group. All I got to do is click and drag till I'm over that, and boom, they're in that group. So it's really pretty simple. If you look at here, I call them Snowflake Pixel 1 through 36. And in this one, I call them Snowflake 2, but it just says Pixel 1 through 36. So if I wanted to repeat this a couple times, it's really easy to do. I can just go add multiple kind of items, numbered items. Nope, nope, that's not what I was going to name them. I was going to name them all the same thing, right? Pixel. One through 36. And click OK. We got them. What did I do wrong there? Ah, that's what I did wrong. I already have elements named pixel 1 through 36, so I can't do that. So it automatically appends a, a 2 to the end, just because it's different than my first one. So that's one thing you got to watch out for. You can't reuse the same names over and over. Um, they do have to be unique. So I might have wanted to call these Snowflake 2 Pixel 1, Snowflake 3 Pixel 1, things like that, um, over and over. You know, that being said, I can go ahead and use one of those more complex naming schemes to generate the pix pixel elements for 4 and 5. So let's go back to Add Multiple. So I want to add elements that are named Snowflake. Uh, I'm just going to type this out first. 4 dash pixel 1. Okay, that's kind of what I want them to look like. So I'm going to use two sets of numbers. The first set of numbers is going to be, oh, and how many elements am I going to generate? I'm going to generate 36 times 2 is 72. So I'm going to start at number, for my first one, number 1 here, which is going to be what this symbol is, this uh, curly braces here, um, number 1. So we're going to make this curly braces 1 and put that in there. That's the placeholder for what this first naming rule is. And we're going to start at 4. And not going to make it end this. We're going to end at 5. Step 1 means it's going to use all the numbers in between there. And in this second group, we're going to use 1 through 36. So what do we got? Oh, I got an extra C in there. Pixel. So we got Snowflake 4, Pixel 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 through... 36 and we got snowflake 5 pixel 1 2 3 4 5 through 36 so I've just added 72 pixels there in one fell swoop I'm gonna go over here I'm gonna select those guys scroll back up here and we're gonna drop those in snowflake 4 and then we're gonna go and select all of these snowflake 5 guys and we're gonna put them right there 
So I've got all my snowflake fives, my fours, my threes. You know, I really don't like these names. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to rename these. So we're going to click rename. These are going to be, I'm just going to go back to simple numbered items because I'm only working on one group. Snowflake. This was three, right? I think it was. So let's go over here and check. Yeah, that was three. So this is snowflake three pixel one through 36. Okay. Snowflake three, one through 36. That's how easy that was. Working with large numbers here really quick. We went all of a sudden from one snowflake with 36 elements, which is actually 108 channels to five snowflakes, each with 108 channels. That gives us a lot of channels, 500 and some odd channels, uh, all defined within just a few minutes here. Now, say these are my snowflakes, but I got other things here too. What if I want to do something to all my snowflakes at once? Well, guess what? We could put all those groups in another group. I can't spell snowflake today. Snowflakes, we got that. Let's take all of those groups and drop them right there under snowflakes. So now that all in one thing, we got these groups are all individually expandable and we can work with them all. So this is a real convenient way to work with large numbers of elements. Now that you have your elements and groups set up, you can go right to sequencing. You may notice that we haven't even talked about DMX or streaming ACN or Renard yet. In Vixen 3, you don't need to define your hardware to start sequencing. You can worry about that later. All you need to know to start sequencing is what lights you have and how you want them organized. In the next introduction video, we'll explore the sequencer and get started putting these elements to work.